he was just he was another example of the human race right so in, in saying this what i mean is look as a kid i was a bright kid and i was a fairly healthy kid when i didn't have my bronchitis attack and <clears throat> And I, I was born into a stable, church-going family where my dad was employed. My mother had been fully employed before she got married. I was the youngest of five kids, and all of my siblings doted on me. And I had a strong family life, a strong school life. I was being raised in a disciplined way as an observant Roman Catholic. I was getting good exercise, good nutrition, good sleep. In other words, I was basically a unit of the human race, in other words, a human child who hadn't been wasted by mm. war, poverty, ignorance, or disease, which are, the, as President Kennedy said, are the common enemies of mankind. I had been, in other words, one of the lucky kids. I had been one of the kids born into one of the wealthiest, most politically successful countries, and one of the most politically powerful, if not the most powerful country in the world. And I had gotten a lot of things that other kids still are not getting like adequate nutrition. And what I mean is, as a result of just being that nth child who was invested in by my society, invested in with love and support and encouragement from my family members and food and shelter and clothing and education from, from my, my society as well, I was a fairly healthy kid. And I think you see that in the pictures of me when I was a child. And as a result of that, I was still able to process and then overcome what happened, which involved being involved in this classified defense-related research and development project, being tortured in it, first of all being traumatized just in terms of what we were doing, but then being intentionally tortured and brainwashed. And I still defeated the system. I still defeated the nameless, faceless system that is the government. Incredible. That doesn't really care about a kid. Did that it? doesn't think that doesn't think twice about intimidating a kid into silence, or making him experience an atrocious headache while he's being brainwashed into forgetting what he's just done on a secret basis for the last three years. Because that's what they did to me. They make if you uh, remembered anything, you would start getting a horrible headache, right? Right. The, the, I, they did do this this brainwashing session when all of my project experiences ended, where. I was placed in a medical lab, and they put these big needles up my spine, and they infused my spinal column and brain with pain, wow. especially my head. My head felt like it was going to explode. It was the most atrocious, nauseating headache you could experience. Now, did it? I felt, yeah. Sorry. And, they, and, they, and, they were speak, and the guy who was doing this was speaking to me in a sing-songy voice for a couple hours, telling me this is how I would feel if I ever thought about what happened in Project Pegasus. So when I look back and I talk about these things in a dichotomous way, people will say something, well, your father put you up to that. But the true story is that my, I, they had a copy of my book, and Connie confronted my father about my claims that they had tortured us to make us forget, and he didn't believe it. So reality is always more complicated than people will make it out to be when they're trying to interpret things based on ideology. But what I mean is I had gotten a lot of privileges and benefits being an American kid of that era. I had even better nutrition than my father did. My father grew up during the Great Depression eating apple butter jelly and, you know, apple butter and toast for two meals a day. Andy? Okay. Andy, can I ask another question? Sure, sure. Just I just wanted to say that. We don't so have much time. I think the significance of the story is that I did overcome the negative things that have been imposed on me in the project, and, and, and one person beat the U.S. Defense Department. It's like a pioneer in that way. Well, I mean, people are always looking for movements to join to get things accomplished. I mean, the telling of my story is basically my work. I, I, I've gotten some help from some people, but it was based on primarily my own effort to go back and prove what happened, and I did. Telling your I have, story, and I've recovered the whole story of what happened. Telling your story, your passion, your determination, and simply just you being you. Exactly, but but also, I mean, but I'm just another example of the human race, right? Yes. So I, just like Bucky, man, I mean, I'm just another... I'm just another human being of the human race in general. And that means, just like Jesus said when he said, what's inside of you is is greater than the world. You know, greater is inside of you than exists in the world, right? Mm -hmm. That's what he meant, and that's what this shows. This shows that one human child could beat the U.S. Defense Department 
in terms of holding back this critical information that can be used to benefit society, like teleportation. And it all crumbles. Now, is it true that they have, um, they're going to reveal to the public that they have a time travel device they know how to build, basically, they know how to build one. And they're going to ask people to um, donate. They need uh, millions of dollars in order to do this. Is this correct? Uh, I don't have any information about current. We were uh, we were talking yeah. about this. Do you remember? You don't remember? Okay. Uh, perhaps if you could put it in context. Where uh, we were speaking about how they have uh, they're going to sh share with the masses that they know how to create a time travel machine. And they need a lot of money in order to make it happen, but lying to the people that, you know, they already have one. Oh, oh yes. Well, what I was talking about was if you look at the conventional, you know, contemporary science reporting, they're talking about people's efforts to perform quantum teleportation, which involves breaking something down and reassembling it somewhere else. Now, that's not effective for physical time travel of human beings or teleportation of human beings. Because disintegrating a biological organism arrests cellular metabolism and basic and, and also central nervous system function and everything else and basically kills the person. The person is killed being disintegrated and they can't be brought back to life after their cells are reintegrated or their atoms that make them up are reintegrated. We were not doing that. We weren't doing quantum teleportation. We were doing Tesla-based teleportation via vortal tunnels that the device was opening up in time-space. In other words, we were doing the opposite of what was then being depicted on Star Trek to confuse the public. What I meant is, over the next several generations, if this information is not liberated and in, in the way that I'm trying to liberate it to help humanity, human civilization led by essentially the English-speaking countries in the Echelon Group and the European Union will pioneer teleportation and spend billions of, you know, re-pioneer re it and spend billions of dollars doing it. And those are dollars that could be spent on nutrition and disease allevi alleviation and education and the upliftment of people from the common enemies of humanity, war, poverty, ignorance, and disease. And so there's a moral dimension to this. We cannot tolerate the spending of public dollars to redevelop technologies that were developed 40 and 50 years ago just to keep them secret, because that's why those billions of dollars would be wasted in redeveloping teleportation. Of all the things, the money that could go to? It could go to having hospital ships that would go around the world and cure children, uh, re correct their cleft palates and cure them from guinea worm and give them medication to prevent malaria and cholera. It could be done, I mean, I was just thinking of, of, of the... Um, I was trying to think of what event it was that could have that could have been used to to to, uh, to pay for a um, hundred hospital ships. Uh, it was some, it was some big recent waste of taxpayer money. But there's a moral dimension to this, and that is that clearly the government is allowing the same things to be reinvented, so that the science journals and so forth can be filled in the public sense in the public realm with data that suggests that certain technology hasn't been developed yet secretly. And I consider that really immoral, because those dollars need to be allocated for present problems. We still have too many children who are hungry. We have, we have something like, what is it, three out of ten children in North America even are living in poverty? Yes. Okay, so as long as there are impoverished and hungry children in the world and impoverished, hungry people, it is immoral to be spending these dollars to develop arcane technical applications that, ha that were developed secretly 40 years ago. So in that sense, the disclosure movement is a moral movement as significant and as weighty as the abolition movement. And I've been saying this in my public lectures. The abolition movement was about freeing people from physical bondage. The disclosure movement is about freeing them from metaphysical bondage. Metaphysical. Not knowing the true extent.